For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Did you know that an average Indian consumes about 50 units of electricity in a month? Did you know since most of this power is generated by burning coal, they contribute about 40 kilograms of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every month? Did you know this adds up to half a ton of carbon emissions into the air every year? Did you know? that india is among the lowest per capita consuming countries in electricity in the world but all of this is about to change india is embarking on an ambitious growth strategy which means it will be playing catch up in electricity consumption which is exactly why everyone says the fight against climate change has to pass through india welcome to mission decarbonizing india Welcome to another edition of Capital Calculus. Another means of decarbonizing is to use hydrogen as an alternate fuel. This idea has already got global buzz. Now India has joined this conversation with its rupees 20000 crore hydrogen mission which it launched last week. To understand why and more, we spoke to Prashanta Sarkar. He is the co-founder and CEO of New Trace. New Trace is a Bangalore-based startup which is threatening to disrupt the entire production process for green hydrogen in india i began by asking prashanta the obvious why is hydrogen being talked up across the world and in india we already have alternate sources of power non conventional like solar etc so why this buzz about hydrogen now right so uh, the renewable sources of energy like the solar and wind are an intermittent source of energy which means that uh, you have them available for certain period of the day also the availability or the intensity of the energy is not uniform across the day so uh, you need something else to uh, kind of come and fill up the whole energy balance in order to supply 24 hours of continuous energy to domestic as well as industrial application now uh, batteries uh, have a challenge that they kind of uh, fulfill short term energy storage and supply uh, but when you're looking at uh, a a fuel which can power the huge energy demand that can that can be transformed from the solar and wind hydrogen fits the bill and that's why people are looking at hydrogen to kind of uh, amplify the electricity that we might be getting from solar and wind uh, something else also to keep in mind is that not all application can be electrified right uh, so hydrogen uh, has already already been used close to 100 million tons uh, globally uh, in application in refineries chemical and fertilizer industry uh, and in those applications is basically a process and feedstock gas right uh, so you still need to make those gas but uh, not from a fossil fuel but from something else which is the renewable or the green hydrogen that we are looking into given the potential of hydrogen it is no wonder that the indian government has just launched a rupees 20000 crore mission so uh, uh, our honorable prime minister has announced the national hydrogen mission uh, on the 75th independence day which was on 15th august 2021 and since that uh, since then the government has been uh, kind of drafting uh, the policies uh, for the national green hydrogen mission uh, one of the uh, the approval that has come from the cabinet is of the recent uh, green hydrogen mission which kind of uh gives close to 19744 crores uh in incentives uh to the whole uh, sector to kick start uh around 5 million tons of uh, green hydrogen production in the whole country uh so this is a really exciting uh, opportunity that has been created by the government to uh kick start a sector that uh, really needed the capital and the push from the government and also a, a very uh, welcome sign of intent from the government uh, that uh, they mean business Uh, and uh, it's uh, imperative of all stakeholders to kind of uh, start uh, deploying capital resources and time in developing uh, the whole asset and infrastructure needed for the entire energy transition uh, towards uh, green fuels so prashant a quick follow up 
what about startups like yours? Can you also look to be drawing on the corpus that the government has set out for uh, the hydrogen mission? Right. So of the uh, 19,744 crores, around 88% of the funds have been earmarked for uh, production link incentive for the uh, hydrogen production as well as for manufacturing electrolyzers. So a startup like uh, Nutrace, uh, which is uh, developing novel electrolyzer technology in the market, uh, can uh, benefit hugely from the, uh, the incentives that the government is uh, providing in order to amp up their manufacturing uh, and be very price competitive uh, by virtue of the technology as well as the manufacturing benefits that the government is offering. Uh, in addition to that, the government is uh, uh, also uh, has kept aside around 1,600 crores for uh, research and development as well as pilot projects, uh, which will be uh, hugely beneficial to uh, start those small demonstrations and pilots which are required to build confidence in the sector. I was curious to know as to what are the savings on a carbon footprint if hydrogen was indeed used as an alternate fuel? Sure. Uh, so I think... Uh, in terms of the global uh, numbers, it's also very interesting, and I will come to the Indian numbers as well. Uh, close to, as I said, close to 100 million tons of hydrogen is produced every year in the world from uh, fossil fuel, uh, which is responsible for 900 million tons of CO2 emission every year. Uh, now, in India, we are producing uh, close to 8 million tons of uh, hydrogen every year. Uh, and as per the new green hydrogen policy, the government has set a target of 5 million tons of green hydrogen by 2030, which will directly translate to around 50 to 60 million tons of CO2 and greenhouse gas emission uh, every year. Uh, so that's the kind of uh, carbon emitment that we are looking at by just producing 5 million tons of green hydrogen by 2030, uh, which in itself is a very uh, challenging target to achieve, to be very honest. Uh, but I think the intent is there and uh, there is uh, enough interest uh, and activity going on in the uh, whole ecosystem to start uh, uh, achieving those targets. So, Prashanta, can it be used in all industries or is it going to be in select class of industries? So of the, uh, the green hydrogen uh, activity that has been going on is it towards uh, uh, kind of replacing uh, uh, 5 to 30 percent of the uh, fossil fuel hydrogen in industries like refineries, chemical, and fertilizers. Uh, and then there is also uh, a lot of activity going on in uh, kind of blending hydrogen with uh, natural gas for industrial uh, application. Uh, and then there are sectors uh, which are even hard to abate, like uh, long haul mobility, uh, the trucks, buses, shipping, uh, planes, uh, the steel and cement sector, which is also looking at a cleaner, uh, greener fuel to uh, transform uh, their activities. Uh, I think those are the activities which will take a bit of time to kind of develop with small, small pilot case studies. But uh, the immediate attention will definitely be towards the refineries and the fertilizer and chemical sectors. Now that we know the benefits of using hydrogen as an alternate fuel, I wanted to understand the process through which hydrogen is produced. So, uh, Pachata, now just to understand this whole idea of green hydrogen, it's the fuel that will be used to undertake the electrolysis, which is what I believe creates hydrogen in the first place, right? So if you could just uh, take a moment and explain to our viewers, how is hydrogen produced uh, using electrolysis? Right. So uh, electrolysis is a very uh, old technique uh, in terms of uh, being from 1800s, uh, uh, where essentially what we are doing is uh, at least for water electrolysis, what we are doing is uh, using uh, uh, the cheaper renewable electricity from solar and wind and splitting water uh, into its constituent of oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, so essentially the hydrogen is captured as a fuel uh, uh, which has uh, one of the highest energy densities per unit of its weight. Uh, and uh, now this hydrogen that we get from the water can be used uh, either as a process or feedstock gas in industry or can be used as a fuel uh, to either produce electricity or uh, let's say to burn in larger sectors, right? Uh, where you kind of minimize all the CO2 emission. Uh, the oxygen that we also produce can find uh, application uh, in uh, hospitals and medical industries or even in industrial usage where they want to do some combustion. Uh, so that, that essentially is what we are trying to do uh, in principle, just use electricity and break down water into uh, hydrogen and oxygen, which is a very uh, physical process. 
To be sure, to produce green hydrogen, the electrolysis process has to be enabled by a non-fossil. The thing is that the price or the cost of electrolysis has failed to fall at the desired pace, like say, for example, solar fuels. Why? So the cost of uh, solar electricity uh, has gone down over 80-85% in the last one decade. Uh, but the cost of electrolyzers, which are the devices where we essentially do the whole splitting of water into oxygen and hydrogen, hasn't moved a lot. Uh, and the reason has been that the entire technology has been dependent on certain critical components uh, and also uh, uh, rare earth metals like platinum and iridium, uh, which are very difficult to find and kind of uh, are one of the uh, very critical or uh, limiting factor in scaling up the current uh, electrolyzer technology. Uh, so some of the technology that has been built has not been uh, built for scalability and that is where uh, the, the kind of hydro green hydrogen sector has been struggling a little bit in terms of scaling up the production uh, and uh, the sizes of electrolyzers to meet the global demand. And as a result, what we have is a huge uh, imbalance between the demand and supply of electrolyzer and green hydrogen production technologies uh, in the market. So I believe uh, that there is... I mean, uh, alternate technology to using these membranes to separate, uh, keep hydrogen and oxygen separate. Uh, there is an alternate mode which is cheaper and uh, more efficient. So, can you just uh, dwell briefly on it uh, before we proceed further? Uh, so, what some of the world, uh, some of the companies in the world are doing is uh, primarily looking at technologies where you can reduce your dependencies on critical components. Uh, and rare earth metals. And that's where precisely uh, as a company, Nutrisoft comes in. Uh, so what we try to do is basically uh, build uh, electrolyzers that are designed uh, are designed uh, from the point of view of scalability and, uh, uh, and de-risking the supply chain. Uh, and kind of uh, we, what we do is we do not use any kind of uh, uh, critical components or rare earth metal to build up our system which means that any technology that you build can be scaled for affordable green hydrogen production uh, at large volumes, which, which is the need of the industry. So tell me something, um, Prashanta, that uh, this new te technology which your company, Nutrace, is also pursuing, is it commercially proven worldwide? Right. Uh, so what we are working on is pilot scale uh, deployments right now. Uh, so there are uh, very few companies globally which have managed to build technologies up to pilot scale for uh, this kind of uh, techniques where you are kind of removing all the dependencies on critical components. Uh, so the technical demonstration of the project, the product and then scaling up of the product uh, takes a bit of time, but uh, what we are do, we are what we have done successfully until now is basically build up and demonstrate a pilot scale unit. Uh, we have one of the uh, one of the units running in our facility, and what we understood was that there are a lot of challenges in the whole ecosystem of building electrolyzers, right? Uh, and uh, there were many small small challenges that had to be addressed, and we have spent our time and effort in solving those challenges. Uh, now is the time this year where we are expanding uh, and building up our manufacturing capabilities to scale up and uh, deploy our product globally. Uh, so this is where we are aiming to take our product to the larger volumes of green hydrogen production and also aiming towards global deployment of the technology because uh, we have really worked on the foundation of the product and build those pipelines which would uh, lead to a continuous production of these devices that we are uh, developing. But is your proof of concept ready? Yes, uh, we have done the proof of concept last year. This year, we have done uh, the pilot demonstration up to a certain scale. Uh, and now we are building up uh, the pipeline for the commercial deployment and commercial uh, demonstration of the product. Uh, so this, this year is very exciting for us in terms of uh, the commercial deployments that we have already in pipe, pipeline. So the products are getting fabricated uh, and we will show the field results uh, going ahead in the next few quarter, quarters. Okay, so we can expect a commercial rollout this year. We are already uh, we already have agreements in place for commercial ro rollouts, and we are kind of currently exploring other uh, uh, other partnerships in terms of commercial rollouts. The big disruption that companies like New Trace are proposing is in the production process of electrolysis. At present, once hydrogen and oxygen are split, they are kept apart by a delicate membrane, which is both expensive and difficult to put together. 
companies like Nutrace are proposing a membrane-less electrolysis which will lower costs dramatically. I think the major focus for all uh, for Nutrace always has been that uh, you can make one of a product uh, just once, right? And it can be the best electrolyzer in the market. Uh, but that's not a very commercial product because you cannot make thousands of them to meet the industrial demand that you have across different sectors. So one of the things that we are always very focused on is building a product that can be mass manufactured. Uh, because making one product is a different ball game, making thousands of them is a different ball game. Uh, so this is something that we have been spending a lot of time in building the whole pipeline that I've been saying. And any player who comes into the market will understand that uh, the traditional uh, sector has a lot of dependencies on critical components uh, from all over the world, right? Uh, and when you have uh, a, a global competition going on in terms of uh, who can deploy and build maximum number of electrolyzers, uh, there is going to be uh, challenges in terms of supply chain uh, that we are already uh, starting to solve. Uh, so as we as we build our capabilities in terms of manufacturing going forward this year, uh, we are very confident about the, uh, the volumes that we can uh, manufacture uh, and deploy to the industries. And that is something that we are very excited about. Uh, what we try to do is basically build a fine balance between uh, efficiency, uh, the cost, uh, which is the initial capex cost, but also the opex. Uh, because when you deploy a machine, you want it to use for 10 to 15 years uh, without minimum uh, damage to the critical components and replacements and downtime. And we have really focused on those aspects where you're finding a very fine balance between the capex and opex. Uh, and finding uh, the best efficiency at which you can produce maximum green hydrogen for your uh, different applications. So, Prashant, a quick follow-up. So, how does the costing uh, stack up both capex and operational expenditure vis-a-vis -vis the traditional membrane approach and your uh, approach? Right. Um, so, we are starting with close to 40 to 50 percent cost reduction in the whole capex of the electrolyzer. And we have been able to do that by virtue of uh, the technology stack up that we have built uh, in terms of the materials that we use, in terms of the number of uh, reduction in the components that we have done in the whole product. Uh, whereas what we try to do is uh, get the efficiency of the uh, whole product close to the best in the market. Right? Uh, we don't have to break down uh, and make the best efficiency of the uh, whole electrolyzer segment uh, because then it will make our product prohibitively very expensive uh, for any mass scale product uh, utilization. Uh, but what we want to do is basically make it a, a very fine balance between the efficiency and the capex of the product. And keeping in mind that the OPEX should be the minimum for our customers. In the final analysis, it is clear that India has embarked on an ambitious mission to decarbonize the country. Actually, decarbonizing may not be as tough as we think. Remember, 60% of the emissions come from 15% of our spending on items like electricity, flying and driving. For example, if I ditch my petrol car and I take an electric car, I will reduce my footprint every month by about 40 kilos, which is about half a ton of carbon dioxide emissions in the country. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Strat News Global on YouTube. Hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates. And please do share your feedback and insights with us. I'm available on Twitter at Capital Calculus. I'll be back next week with another edition. Till then, stay safe. Wait, don't go yet. We have more on the business of hydrogen on Strat News Global. In a short while from now, my colleague Nitin Gokhale's conversation with Hardeep Puri will be aired on Strat News Global. Do watch.